Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and I'm here today with a sample reading. Uh, as the title of this video indicates, we're going to be reading with um, the Druid Craft Tarot and the Margaret Peterson. And this uh, Margaret Peterson is new to my collection. I wanted to do this as a sample reading because the way that it worked out, it just gave me a lot of interesting information and I thought this might be a helpful um, thing to think about when you are um, doing readings, especially if you're doing readings for yourself, which can often be um, somewhat hard to decipher or, you know, we're worried about being very biased about our own situations and not getting a clear um, picture of what uh, the reading might have to offer. Um, so I, um, you'll have to bear with me because I don't feel like being on camera today. I'm not feeling very well, um, which I'll get into in a minute. I'm just going to tell you kind of the backstory of why I did this particular reading for myself and then get into um, the reading itself. So I've recently received a, a more clear diagnosis on a condition that I've been living with for about 20 years. And uh, not to be, you know, totally mysterious about that, um, it is an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's disease. It's actually quite common, um, and it's linked genetically. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a minute too. So it's been an interesting month or so that I've been doing research into this. In case anyone is interested in the resource I'm using, I'll caveat this by saying I am not a doctor. I am certainly not your doctor. Um, and so I am not dispensing medical advice. Um, and so I have turned to a particular book, um, which I'll link in the uh, description box below in case, you know, you or, or someone you know is affected by Hashimoto's and has, an, uh, you know, a diagnosis on that and wants to. What I'm getting around to here is the reason for my reading. So in my research, what I have uh, found is that there's a recommendation to make a lot of dietary um, changes uh, to sort of cut off the various pathways um, that trigger the body to attack itself, to, that, that make the autoimmune disease flare up. Um, even though I've been on various restrictive diets over the years and I've, you know, tried a lot of different things, it's still kind of intimidating to, you know, have to cut out other things um, or to shift the, the focus of your diet and sort of how you're thinking about putting meals together and the components of those. Um, when you encounter that kind of advice. And so my answer, my question rather, was around basically how to deal with this information, how to deal with this and learning this new protocol for Hashimoto's and making all these dietary changes. So not about the diagnosis itself or directly about medical advice, but to how to handle that medical advice and how to act on it. I will say that I would never go to the cards just to like try to diagnose something, right? Because when you go to any kind of oracle, you are tap I believe you are just tapping into your own intuition that is maybe something that's hard for you to tap into without these tools. So, I think consulting an oracle for medical advice has a lot of limitations. So I wouldn't go to this for medical advice. I wouldn't say like, help me diagnose what's wrong with XYZ part of my body. But I think where tarot and other divination systems, especially uh, narrative divination systems have a strength is, is in helping us deal with the psychological impact of uh, medical diagnoses or, you know, dealing with change or dealing with difficult topics or, you know, being frustrated about something. Um, I think that's really where these things can shine and and where they can be most helpful. Okay, so with that preamble aside, I will get into the, the reading itself. Um, I started out, I didn't intend to do this reading with two decks, I just wanted to do it with one and kind of get an answer. And it was funny because I wanted, you know, something fairly straightforward. So I was like, okay, I'll pick an RWS clone. I don't really feel like reading with RWS in this moment. So I went with the Druidcraft because it's, you know, a pretty neutral deck. It's got open-ended imagery and, you know, it's, it's uh, beautiful. I love w Will Worthington's art. And so I just asked the question, you know, how can I, how can I best react to this diagnosis and, and move forward with this information? And these are the cards that I got. Um, I got the Hermit, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Two of Swords. 
So these are the cards I got, and straight out of the gate, um, no surprise that we have the Hermit here. When I asked the question, I was actually trying to avoid the question. I was trying to read on some other sort of more banal topic, but I got these three cards, and I was like, oh, this is actually what's on my mind, and this is the reading that I need to pay attention to. So it's funny because sometimes tarot, even in trying to avoid things, will, will point out <laughs> what you need to know. Uh, because this reading didn't make any sense with the other topic that I had picked out. But just prior to that, I had been thinking about my health. And <laughs> so this is what came up. Here we can see someone, you know, who's searching with their lantern, um, looking for answers. I see this as sometimes a scholar card. Um, they don't present that way in this particular uh, image. But someone who's knowledgeable, someone who is not afraid to go off by themselves, the lone wolf idea here. And I just see this as, you know, needing to, to continue to gather information, needing to continue to seek sources from people who are more knowledgeable about my condition than I am or, or have been. Because um, like I said, I've, I've been living with this for a long time, but um, haven't really been investigating, you know, the root causes of it. And then with the Seven of Pentacles, we get a figure who is harvesting um, something out of a tree. It looks to me like this is an oak tree, and then that would be mistletoe. And mistletoe is an interesting plant in and of itself. Again, I would not read this as like advice to take mistletoe because it, it is a toxic plant. Um, but I know it's used medicinally in some cases um, in, a, in a much uh, milder preparation. Um, but just the idea of harvesting natural herbs, turning to natural remedies, um, and that kind of thing was sort of the first idea that I had about this card. And then the Two of Swords um, is an interesting one, particularly because this card came up, up both in my 2023 year reading and also my solar return reading that I did around my birthday month. month. Um, in both cases, I got the Two of Swords. And so I get it again here with this big life question of what am I, you know, what am I going to do about this diagnosis? What am I going to, how am I going to move forward? And again, this idea of discernment and picking and choosing um, at each step what is most beneficial. And here the figure is blindfolded. We can't see their face, but they have this blindfold on. And so I see them as trying to be as unbiased as possible. So not necessarily relying on, you know, previous modes of operating or uh, kind of modes of thinking of like, this is going to be too difficult. I don't want to do it. I don't want to face up to this. Um, I don't want to change my diet, you know, all of that kind of stuff, setting all of that kind of complaining aside and just being really clear headed. Now, I did go um, into the guidebook a bit um, for this reading as well, so I'll share a little bit of that. I will uh, put a plug in for um, the Fool's Dog apps that are available on the various uh, application stores that you can get for, for mobile devices and things. And uh, because this, um, this format of this deck, it was originally sold in a much larger box with a big thick guidebook, and I do have that version. Um, this was the version that came with this thinner guidebook, which is useful but doesn't have as much information. There's also this Fool's Dog app, which if you don't have this deck and are not interested in it but you're curious about the, the writing in it, I believe it's about $3.99 right now on the App Store. So the nice thing about that is that you can still see all the images of the cards. You can actually get the computer to do a reading to pull cards for you if you want. And then um, you get the full text of the Big Thick Guidebook. Now, uh, the writing in the bigger guidebook is about two and a half pages. And a lot of what Philip Cargom says about this is to do with spiritual spirituality, spiritual quests, and sort of, you know, delaying important decisions and things like that. I didn't really feel like any of that had uh, applicability in this case. I do need to take action. I can't just wait for stuff to happen. Um, I've been waiting for 20 years to better understand my body and what it's doing. And now that I have that information, I, I do need to take action. Um, but here's what the uh, first part of the Hermit entry says. It says, The Hermit stands on a summit holding a staff and lantern whose light casts no shadows, indicating that it sheds supernal, non-physical light. The Hermit is the Ancient of Days, the wise old man, the adept, the guardian of the great work, Merlin, the druid sage, who invites us to take a journey, an inner quest. 
Just as a wolf accompanied Merlin during his hermitage in the forests of Caledon, so here the hermit is accompanied by a wolf who symbolizes the qualities of self-containment, inner wisdom, and power. So I see that as speaking to taking back my power to pursue the path that I need to pursue in order to feel better and, you know, doing my own research and following my own, you know, sense of where I can get this help and guidance that I haven't been getting from the mainstream uh, medical industry. Uh, moving on to the Seven of Pentacles, I would say that the individual entry for that card uh, didn't really resonate either. But there is some interesting stuff uh, that is said about the sevens. And in this guidebook, um, that is how the minors uh, or the one through 10 are organized. So in turning to this section on the sevens, we're first given three keywords, which are magic, spirituality, and research. And again, research is the one that caught my eye. He says, Contemplating the existence of these sevens, we realize that we are touching upon an essential structure of both the microcosm and macrocosm. For this reason, the number seven is associated with study, research, knowledge, and analysis. Since part of the motivation for spiritual inquiry lies in our wishing to understand the nature of being and of life and the universe. And that resonates with me in terms of understanding how all the various systems in the body are connected. Um, like I said, it's, you know, it's initially diagnosed as a hormone imbalance, but one hormone being out of whack throws all the hormones out of whack. It throws the endocrine system out of whack. It throws the digestive and the immune system out of whack. So you can't just treat one thing and say, oh, here, just take this pill and it will all magically be better. You have to go deeper than that. You have to understand the root causes and you have to uh, branch out, as it were, and harvest that knowledge from various sources in order to fully understand this condition. And then for the twos, there wasn't anything really groundbreaking again in the uh, descriptions in the Druidcraft book, but the keywords were relationship, choice, and experience. Again, think of this as being clear-minded about taking, you know, a scientific approach to uh, my choices and what I'm going to do, this or that, this way, that way, um, at each stage. So, you know, in this elimination diet and, you know, restrictive diet that I'm going to go on, kind of examining the the effects of eating certain foods or taking certain supplements or whatever and really trying to get in touch with my body you're trying to get my mind and my body to connect together because I think part of my struggle is that I've been ignoring a lot of my physical symptoms I've just written it off as oh you know that restaurant must have put something weird in their food or that you know the thing that I ate out of the fridge from last week must have gone off um, and maybe wasn't quite fresh enough and, and you know, that's what's causing my distress when really it's um, ingredients you know uh, that have been upsetting my system and lack of certain ingredients um, you know contributing to some difficulty uh, with digestion and and all of that so being discerning and being you know treating this basically like an experiment treating myself as an experiment and taking careful note of what's going on um, what choices i make and what the results are and continually updating and tweaking my approach to suit as i start to hopefully feel better so this was a you know pretty good reading on its own um but again this deck reads kind of like any RWS deck. And so after I sat with this for a while, I thought, I wonder if another deck that has a different approach might give me some more information. I had been quite struck by the Mar Margaret Peterson Tarot um, just when I first opened it and started browsing through the book. And I was a little intimidated to sit down and use it immediately. But then I thought, here's a, you know, a good chance to do that because I have my reading. I, you know, I shuffled and pulled my cards. This is my reading and it's not gonna change. But if I overlay another set of images and, you know, maybe look in this guidebook, what else can I glean? So in this um, tarot, uh, Margaret Peterson has renamed some of the uh, cards. Um, she uses coins instead of pentacles, uh, which is pretty common. I'm surprised she didn't go for something like rocks or earth or something like that. Um, but she does have coins here. She has feathers instead of swords, so this is the air suit. It's still uh, tied in elementally with the two of swords, but um, she took a different kind of approach with this. And then the crone is uh, substituted here for the hermit. Um, and 
first of all, I like the interplay of these two cards because they have this very similar color palette here with these sort of rust and dirt colors, lots of earthy colors, a little bit of black in there. Um, I think they just play well together and it's interesting to me that this two of feathers is the oddball of the three and kind of sticks out as, as different. So if we compare um, both the imagery and then the, the guidebook here, um, just first like thinking about a hermit versus a crone, I think of a hermit as more as someone who does want to be withdrawn, as someone who does intend to simply go off on their own um, and not be bothered and, and learn on their own. Um, a crone I think of more as someone who is maybe pushed to the edges of society, but doesn't necessarily intend to be on their own. It's just that society has disregarded them because crones are typically old women and they are undervalued, um, especially in Western society now. Um, from maybe you know a pagan or a witchcraft perspective, crones are, are more valued for their wisdom and their insight. And so I saw this card as saying, you know, look to people who do know more. Look to people who have studied this condition. Um, look to people who have studied this condition through the lens of you know a more natural remedy, um, something that is more tied in with the earth, something that is not dependent on pharmaceuticals or surgery or things like that, but that is more tied in with the environment and with the natural processes, um, the interlinked processes of the body, which are not really uh, well regarded in Western medicine. Um, and then we get the seven of coins and we see um, another reference to herbalism to me here. So we have up here, we have a reference to harvesting some kind of natural material, natural herbs. And then here again, we get a depiction of herbs um, in this card. But we also get this depiction of, uh, it sort of looks like a cave painting. And to me, it looks like a family. You have two larger figures and a smaller figure. So, you know, two adults and a child. And then over here we have the two of feathers. We have this globe um, sort of shape in the background, this round image. Um, and then two feathers uh, going in opposite directions here to sort of mimic the opposite directions of our swords in this card. And I just want to read you a little bit from the Margaret Peterson guidebook um, about these selections as well. So I mentioned in another video um, that the major arcana um, each have a poem that goes with them. The crone, aging as a spiritual journey, the soul listening inward through the ear labyrinth, listening to the voice of the heart, place of knowledge and wisdom, the old traveler on her way to the point of oneness where she touches the cosmic whole, wingless flying straight into the heart, every step is perfect. I think that's a beautiful poem on a, on a, sort of a functional reading like this, you know, what should I do? Um, it's basically saying, trust your intuition. Uh, trust that even though medical science has kind of let you down, um, that you are smart enough and you can evaluate other sources of information uh, that are available and you can discern and through help with my my regular GP um, who is on board by the way she's not she's not being proactively helpful I, I would say but I ran you know my my ideas past her and sent her a copy of the book um, that I'm using for guidance and she said yeah you know this seems fine um, go for it and we'll do some more tests um, and see how you're getting on once you've, you know, made these changes. And so that told me sort of to trust my intuition. Like I, I found this book and I got really excited about it and then I wanted to make sure that it was okay and got the go ahead. So that was good. So for the uh, earth element itself, uh, Margaret Peterson says um, that on a physical level, the earth element represents all that is solid and heavy, such as bones, organs, flesh, hair, and teeth. Um, these are all uh, things that are affected um, by um, the disease that I have been diagnosed with. And so that just pointed to, again, that the very practical, very body-focused 
you know, just keeping that in mind, uh, keeping in mind that I am I'm really practically trying to help heal my body. Um, and the other thing, like I pointed out, um, you have this family here. And in talking to my parents, I have discovered that um, I knew that they both uh, suffered from low thyroid and also take this medication. But not only them, but also at least one grandparent on each side of the family. So there is a, a gene that is um, linked with Hashimoto's and probably indicates a more susceptibility to this condition getting triggered in the body in the first place. And I am convinced at this point, even though I have not had any kind of genetic analysis, I'm convinced I must have this gene because um, this all of the symptoms that are discussed are just lit up in my body right now. And it makes perfect sense that, you know, having seen that um, from a ancestral point of view, that this is just something that I'm very susceptible to. And it, it was very likely um, going to hit me at some point in my life. So um, not to feel necessarily like I failed or something like that, but just that, hey, this is a situation I have to deal with. And then again, in the Two of Feathers, Margaret Peterson discusses analytical thought, scientific kind of thinking. Um, and, but also pausing in meditation and considering your thought patterns. And I think that's going to be helpful for me too, not just to be up here and discerning through um, the practical applications and the, you know, do this, don't do that side of things, but also uh, looking at how I may be stuck in my my habits and patterns of the last 20 years and things that have not been helping me and, and sort of... Um, I think one of those things where you have to give up, you know, certain foods that you really like or certain things that you feel like you can't live without, um, that's all just a narrative, really, that you've made up. Um, and you can change those thought patterns if you work at it. So accepting, you know, accepting this as a reality and again, turning my mind instead of looking at like, oh, woe is me, how sad, I have to give up my favorite foods. Instead, looking at that and going, well, how do you feel after you eat those foods? You feel terrible, um, which is how I feel today after having had a very, you know, maybe three bites of something with gluten in it last night. Um, I just feel not very good today and I can directly link it to that meal. Um, and you know, so looking at stuff like that and saying, okay, I'm going to write this down in my, you know, health diary that I'm going to keep now. I'm going to track my food. I'm going to track how I feel every day and see if I can draw some links and really reinforce this idea that I'm not giving up my favorite foods. I'm giving up things that are poisonous to me that are, that are actually causing me to feel unwell and, you know, increasing the, the flare ups and the, you know, symptoms and things that I have, um, through this diagnosis. And then hopefully, Hopefully also, you know, finding other things that help me feel better and um, that uh, support me and feeling good about that, you know, changing my, my thinking patterns to say, well, I have to eat this. No, you don't have to eat that. You can eat whatever you want. But if you want to feel good and you don't want to be miserable in your body, then you make different kinds of choices and you will feel better and then you'll feel better about that um, because you won't be suffering as much. So that's kind of the whole uh, the whole reading. And I just think it's interesting how, you know, these things, uh, these two decks um, talking about the same topic, um, both are, are distinct and then they also overlap a bit. Um, and I, I'm wondering if you see anything else um, symbolically here um, that, you know, I may not have pointed out. Um, I did do some journaling and I wrote some more uh, stuff about it that's a little more personal, but but that's kind of the gist of, of this reading. Um, and I'm wondering what you all think about this kind of video as well. Um, I'm not just calling on you to pay me a bunch of compliments, but, but you know, is this useful? Is it interesting? Um, do you read in this way? I don't know. Uh, I will say that my demonstration reading videos are some of the lowest ranked on my channel, which is fine. Um, really, I'm doing this channel for me, um, and if other people like it, cool. So it's not that everything has to be super popular, but um, if it's helpful to a few people, that's that would be nice to know. So thank you again for joining me for this ramble, and uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.